Hey guys, on the stand board here solo outside this keep next to this resource. Got some guys on us. We're on our heavy armor, dual wield sword and board Stamden. We also had the dual wield sword and board Stamden of the DK, and I'm really enjoying the dual wield sword and board this patch. Took a long break from the game, but now we're back trying to get some good fights every now and then if we can get them. Um, running a tanky setup here in the Warden. The Warden benefits from this due to its health-based heal and arctic blast and that's what we're spamming here to keep us alive it also is a mediocre stun um, more of a defensive stun it can be used kind of like surprise attack on a night blade if you have a lot of guys around you um, putting some pressure out on these guys with these dots and i am running some dots and some poisons keeping subterranean assault up whirling blades is a great execute um, I really like it better than uh, Execution right now, just for the AOE and then just the accuracy that it has. Um, Executioner, I tend to miss a lot. Um, and then, to me, there's really, really no reason to run 2H um, with the nerf to Onslaught and the, the nerfs to Forward Momentum, uh, running Race Against Time for a snare removal, plus it gives you Major Expedition. And the Warden's got uh, ways of making up damage, so I'm kind of built more tanky, um, obviously using Malakath, but the, also the, the Warden has, you know, 5% with, with Bird, extra damage with, with the Bird of Prey, and then 5% with minor vulnerability from Swarm. Um, and the class has just great mobility in general um, with uh, Bird of Prey or Race Against Time. And I, I'm using both, like one for snare removal and... I do use Bird of Freight. It gives a little longer major expedition duration, but it's mainly for the damage uh, on the front bar. So I am on the PlayStation 5 with this footage. And if you're curious to want to know if it plays better, um, it's kind of hard to tell, to be honest with you. The game definitely plays better as far as, as in load times and in the overworld. Cyrodiil is a little different. The Cyrodiil still lags really bad. Cyrodiil, there's nights where it's basically unplayable. The skills still won't go off. You can just mash them over and over and they still won't go off. Um, that's an issue with them, not the PlayStation 5. There's other games that I, that I play on the PlayStation 5, like Path of Exile. Uh, and the, the performance is just night and day on that game compared to the PlayStation 4. Um, Really good, really good speed on the on the console, and you'll see some improvements um, playing ESO on the PlayStation Five. But it may not be what you want in Cyrodiil. However, I will say the game plays a lot better in Cyrodiil than it did back in you know June, July of 2020. So it's kind of a step in the right direction, I guess. So here we are in our Stam DK. Kind of running a similar setup, and when I think about Stam DK and Stam Warden, it's really hard to choose. Um, you know, I, I play solo a lot. I just do. I always have. Um, it's fun. I think you know, being outnumbered and getting guys like this to to fight against you to see if you can survive and test your build out and your skill out. But in my opinion, Stam Warden has this patch. I would say better healing due to having the Arty Blast, um, better mobility. It doesn't have the single target pressure, um, mainly due to it not having a really good stun, like Stam DK's fossilize. It's just so great, so powerful. It's just basically hit the button and they're stunned. It's really powerful. Um, Stam DK has a little more pressure. It's got Venomous Claw, uh, which is a powerful dot. You don't have the subterranean, subterranean Assault. Subterranean Assault cycling in gives you some added burst, but against players who are not so, you know, you know, most people that you want VX are obviously not up to either your build or skill level or whatever, but Leap, Dragon Leap still takes out people like, like crazy. Um, so, I'm, I'm on my stand DK right now, and I'm going to hop back on some PC PvP. I'm not max CP there, but I have my stand DK, you know, max level one. Um, on that, on the on the PC as well. So, um, really, really happy with both setups. 
Uh, it's, they're very powerful. I mean, it's a different way of playing than what it was back, you know, months ago. I don't run super high weapon damage anymore. Being that there's so many procs and the procs are buffed up with the Malakath ring, I run more defensive than I ever have. And I can still get damage and, and do enough damage to kill people um, by, you know, building in a specific way. But you, you just can't play the way you used to. At least I can't. Um, and that could be a good thing or a bad thing, however you look at it. I don't mind procs. Never have, really. I think it gives a variety to things when you have different setups that can do different things. Whereas everybody just running all weapon damage is, um, you know, one way, one way of doing it. But when you have different proc sets, and, and that can be a bad thing if everybody's just running the same thing. Like Crimson, for example, is probably one of the most popular ones. And I see a lot of people running that. Um, but, you know, instead of super nerfing these sets, I think Zaz should really, you know, buff sets up that, nobody uses but i mean that's a story for a different day and this last fight here i just added this i thought this was funny because these guys were they had me outnumbered a lot but when uh <laughs> i guess these guys are healers so when i turned the tables on them and their buddies abandoned them um i was able to run them down and the, and the last guy here tries to go and hide you'll see but we catch him and we get to execute on him. But anyways, quick video. Um, thanks for, for watching and uh, see you guys next time.